Now, because Rick Michigan isn't quite so uh, uh, much of a pain as, as Walker, we're not seeing quite that sharp a reaction in Michigan, but we're still seeing some of it. And I think that there are a lot of people in the state who are feeling pinched by events. And so I think that the Republicans in Michigan and elsewhere are causing themselves grief long term by radicalizing especially young people, but also by people who care about public schools. At this point, they've turned over issues like, if you like the police department, you're, you're sort of a liberal. I mean, whoever thought that, that wanting a better police department was a leftist sort of thing, but, but the Republicans are into gutting police departments and fire departments now. You know, if you believe in the scientific method that makes you a leftist. Um, so they're, they're radicalizing science teachers. Anyway, I just think that the Republicans are overplaying their hands all over the country, and I think that especially Wisconsin is certainly the the uh, archetypal case. In Wisconsin, it will be a long time before Republicans are in a good position politically. In Michigan, you know, I just think that that we're creating a cadre of ten or twenty thousand people who will be precinct delegates and down, Democratic Party donors for a long time. Yogi Berra wisely said, it's hard to make predictions, and especially about the future. It's hard enough to understand the elections which have gone by, and, and understanding the elections which haven't happened yet is even harder. As I work through the process of the last 10 years, what I'm struck by is there's a great balance wheel in American life, in American political life. The party that's in gets elected because it's there to redress some sort of grievance that people have, because the other party screwed up. So W gets in by hook or by crook. The point is he's president. He's president for eight years. Each year of his administration undermined the Republican Party more and more. At the beginning of it, especially after 9-11, there was a rally around the flag effect, but that faded, and by the end, people, lots of middle class, middle of the road people were really fed up with republicanism, with the war in Iraq, with torture, with a hundred issues, you know, with, with the crazy deficit spending, all the things that the Republicans did. And it made the Democrats look really good. One of the things I said was, at, at the polls at the time, showed that the public thought that Democrats were substantially more honest than Republicans. And I said at the time, just wait till we get in power. We will cure that misperception. So in 2006, we had a very Democrat year. In 2008, we had another very good Democrat year. We were really taking over lots of seats. And after 2008, of course, the Democrats controlled the presidency, the Senate, and the House. And we finally had an opportunity to demonstrate to people that we are no more to be trusted with power than the Republicans are. And so two years of Obama and the Democratic administration began to dishearten Democrats and Democratic-leaning independents and began to sort of mobilize, galvanize, maybe even freak out a bunch of Republicans. The particular reasons that Republicans are freaked out varies, and, and they almost don't matter. I mean, it just it's a natural phenomenon. I think, though, that for many Republicans, racism is very close to the surface, and the idea that there's a black guy in the White House, you know, it's just really hard to understand how that can happen. And I think that out there in Kentucky, in Arkansas, it's just really hard for them to, to come to terms with it. But whatever the specific reasons, and it's different for different people, the Republicans are have, have been mobilized and have been kind of uh, energized and are now, com at least two years ago, last year, 2000, in the 2010 election, are completely confident in themselves. They're just sure they're right. And the Democrats are no longer sure they're right. Well, now the Democrats 
have managed to kick the ball back to the Republicans. The Republicans control most governorships. Republicans control most state legislatures. Republicans have an overwhelming majority, working majority in the Congress. And Republicans are sort of on the move on policy issues. I mean, you know, cutting taxes and cutting services and cutting everything. And we don't need, uh, we don't need schools. We don't need science. We don't need roads. We don't need bridges. We don't need police. We don't need firefighters. You know, the best government is the government the government's least and guns for everybody and, uh, you know, madness. Well, that is exactly the kind of rhetoric which makes the Republicans feel like they've achieved everything and makes the saner members among them doubtful about their fitness to govern and takes a lot of people who are in the middle and makes them feel like Democrats again. So my guess is, this is a long way to get back to your, to your question, what's going to happen in 2012, we're going to have a higher turnout, which is always good for the Democratic Party, but we're also going to have a world where the Republicans have overplayed their hands. And so I think 2012 is going to be a fairly Democratic year. That will be tempered by the fact that Republicans control reapportionment and redistricting in so many states that uh, there will be technical problems for Democrats to take legislative seats and congressional seats because the Republicans will have drawn lines that make it harder. But still, I think there will be a pretty substantial Democratic tide in 2012. The phenomenon is actually much more complicated than anybody describes. And so if I try to answer the question, which I will try, I don't think anyone will understand my answer. The people who turned out for the first time in 2008 are no longer first-time voters. Those individuals, if we're talking about those individuals, if they still are living at the same address as they did in 2008, have now lived at the same address for four years. Let's say if they haven't moved. And anybody who lives at the same address for four years after voting once is very likely to vote again because they're not first-time voters, because they know where their polling place is, because voting isn't a foreign experience to them, because they've begun reading the papers, because you know they've, they've gotten involved in politics. The real issue isn't the people who voted in 2008. The real issue is their equivalents, the people who, for example, have just turned 18, 19, 20, 21, and who didn't vote in 2008. Right? Are they going to turn out? The people who have moved, right? The, and, and the people maybe who have never voted, is there going to be another surge of first-time voters to the polls? That's a good question. Um, it won't be as big as 2008. The Obama administration, I should say the Obama campaign, has pretty deep roots and has a lot of money and really will have a lot of volunteers. They'll do a pretty good job of turning people out, uh, but it won't be as big a thing as, as the 2008 election. You can never really, you know, Mao talked about a permanent revolution as if, you know, his overthrowing uh, the uh, Chinese nationalists, you know, he was going to continue that for the rest of China's existence. There's no such thing as a permanent revolution. The revolution is a one-time thing, the American Revolution. You know, it eventually ended. We signed a peace treaty with the British, and then you have to get down to the business of running the government. The Obama Revolution was a one-time thing. We now have a black president. You know, we got rid of W, and we are gradually removing all of the ghosts of, of W's policies in the country. The next time, it won't be as big a deal. Now, the turnout in 2012 would be respectable, and will include lots of African Americans and lots of young people, but it won't be as big as, as the past. But as just to draw that initial point again, the issue is not literally the individuals who voted in 2008. The issue is people who are demographically equivalent to them, who are either people who have never voted and have, you know, have joined the electorate since then, or who have moved and don't have uh, stable, fixed addresses, you know, a few months before the election. Whether they can be registered and turned out is the question. Do you have anything else you want to talk about? <clears throat> I just think you're going to have to do a lot of editing and 